Have you ever wondered how to set up a regulator for carbon dioxide delivery? Well, this Debaco University video will cover just that. All right, let's go over how to set up a regulator for carbon dioxide delivery. And in this picture here, we see we have our carbon dioxide tank, we have a pressure gauge, a flow meter, uh, which is basically kind of regulation of the process that of the carbon dioxide that comes out of the tank, an adjustment knob to adjust the flow, tubing, and a solenoid to have that valve come on and off. Sadly, it looks like this tank is empty looking at the pressure gauge, but this will, um, when you first have a bottle, will come up and give you the ID of the pressure on your new bottle. So first off, what's the function of the regulator? Well, to deliver the actual carbon dioxide at a fixed flow rate. The control determines the frequency and duration of delivery, but it's the regulator that actually is having the rate of delivery. For simplicity, the regulator that would be attached to a compressed CO2 bottle will be used for a model of comparison, as we can see that here, and they're relatively common and relatively simple in their workings as well. So first off, the general components of that regulator, as I mentioned. There's an attachment nut with a washer inside, and that's located right here, and here we see it on the bottle. It's always a good idea to have some extra washers. You have a bottle pressure gauge, and we can see that here, and also located right here. Then the flow rate, which is in the flow meter, want to check the units on your flow meter. An adjustment knob, in this case it's located here, in this case it'd be right here. The actual on-off electronic valve or solenoid, we can see this one located right here, and this one's right off to the side here. And the power cord that comes off this goes directly to the controller. And then we have the dispensing point of CO2, which is located right here with, with what we see some black tubing attached. And here we see the barb fitting, which would have CO2 dispensing tubing applied to it right there. The washer should be in here, and it's always advantageous and re recommended to have an extra. So what are the importance of these washers? Well, we can see them located right here. Have extras and replaces needed in the sense that this is what's going to stop leaking carbon dioxide. They're natural, um, they're nylon washers. They're naturally, you come right in there. It's good, good to have some extras because they either sometimes can take a set or they can fall off and get lost. And it's really advantageous to eliminate any wasting CO2 by having this washer in there. Once connected and tightened, so you go through here, we have our little uh, regulator tightened up. Here we have the extra uh, washer zip tied right to there, good place to put them. You want to read over the regulator's instructions, but typically on an average system, once all the systems are set up, you can turn on the carbon dioxide bottle by slowly rotating the top to the on position. Avoid just opening the valve and the CO2 rushing into the closed valve as this could damage critical internal components. You want to try to be as careful as possible as kind of just releasing um, that carbon dioxide bottle. There's a lot of pressure in very new bottles. You know the system is pressurized when the gauge provides a pressure reading. So right here, the carbon dioxide bottle would be off, and this will come up and give you a pressure reading. A full bottle, the pressure should be around 1,000 PSI or 7,000 kPa, which is going to put you generally in this kind of range right here. Again, depends on what you're filling the bottles to. Don't expect this to go all the way to full. Uh, it's going to be pretty much around 1,000 PSI or under. And temperature will also have uh, an effect on that. Once pressurized, you should listen carefully for any potential leaks. The system should be silent unless the sensor is coming on and actually dosing CO2. Even if you hear a slight hissing sound, investigate all connections. Listen carefully to all areas of the valve, and if you cannot determine the exact area, there is a trick. It's called the soapy water trick if you hear that little hissing snake noise. So how does soapy water come into play with this? Well, you take your regulator in areas where you're going to have carbon dioxide moving, and you add soapy water to it. So if you suspect the regulator or some other part of the carbon dioxide system has a leak, take some water and add some soap to it. And we can see that evident right here. You want the um, le level there. You want to look where the bubbles will form, because the soapy water with that little leaking is going to cause little bubbles to form. Take the soapy water solution and apply it to the regulator. So add a little soap to the water, stir it up, and then just apply it over the regulator. If air is leaking, you will see small bubbles forming to pinpoint the exact area of the leak. And we can see this connection right here is failing because we're seeing the uh, little bubbles being blown by the leaking escaping air here. Great, easy, quick little trick that I've used myself, and it works wonders. So what adjustments do you make to your regulator? You have all these options and flow rates, so what do you adjust it to? So regulating the flow rate can depend on the size of the growing space. Running the flow rate too high in a small growth space will cause large swings in carbon dioxide levels, making it uh, difficult to control the levels if they go too high and get too low. 
running the fl flow rate too slow will cause the target levels not to be reached in the grow space. I typically find to not go above 10 uh, CFM, which is cubic feet per minute, as this may cause the regulator to freeze up. Now, what does a regulator freeze up look like? Well, when you have one fail and the rate goes way too fast for way too long, you actually get a kind of strong chilling effect. So this would be a prime example of regulator freeze up. This occurs when the flow rate of carbon dioxide is too fast and there is a strong cooling effect. And we can see right out of the bottle, no problem, but where it's kind of, here's where it's kind of flowing, that's where you're having that strong cooling effect. The carbon dioxide is cold when it goes from the compressed state to the uncompressed state, and that's why you're getting that massive chilling effect. This can happen even in hot grow spaces, such as greenhouses or high tunnels. Uh, if there is a problem with your regulator, the valve gets stuck open, it can cause the bottle to empty quickly, resulting in a frozen regulator. And this is an example here of a regulator that had failed, got stuck open, didn't close, and dispensed a lot of carbon dioxide in a very short period of time, resulting in regulator freeze up. Now the suggested flow rates, uh, this is just one example of one of the regulators shooting for 1,200 parts per million, looking at your cubic feet of your growth space and then your cubic feet per hour that you should be injecting to try to give you an idea of at least a starting point and then you can make adjustments from there. So this is a great way to kind of look at and understand to be as efficient with your regulator for enriching your, your growing space with carbon dioxide.